often I have to explain this concept for new people who don't understand that there's such a thing as the right kind and wrong kind of white people, or that when we talk about white people, it is a deracinated concept, that it's a very vague notion, that it's not really a French, German, Irish person, it's a white person. And this is kind of referred to as a bland individual of admixture European descendants. But in liberal cosmopolitan terminology, white also means that one has middle class bourgeois values and less and less has to do with a co cohesive admixture European person like a South Africaner or something like that. And personally, I've always said this to friends and associates that I don't see myself as a quote-unquote white person. Uh, I see myself as an ex-white person that often I see myself belonging to some canon of Irish, French, Hungarian, Polish, admixture, European person growing up in the Delaware Valley type of Heideggerian authenticity. But at the same time, I'm an ex-white person because I also don't belong to that canon, and I have looking and tr going to a, going forwards a new identity that I can claim as Eurasianism or a new experience that the person who is deracinated has to re rediscover themselves. And so this is very strange for people who are comfortable with being white. And let me go further into that and explain some concepts of Christian Lander. So Christian Lander had two books, Stuff White People Like, and the second book, Whiter Shades of Pale. Um, in Whiter Shades of Pale is where he discusses the right kind of white people and the wrong kind of white people. And I will be saying that, I'll be calling this the rights versus the wrongs. And let me get into what makes the difference between rights and wrong type of white people, as said by Lander. Now, the right kind of white people, or the rights, are often affluent and artistic. They are cosmopolitan by nature. They are morally and ethically grounded and often nice people. You wouldn't want to hurt them, and they're nice to anyone. They're intellectual. It's as if they got, they got two master degrees, and they could be a associate professor, even without college education. Often they have light white collar work, working into some made up job position at a quote unquote tech lab in order to retain that 80,000 to 100,000 a year so they can do fun stuff, you know, not exactly follow a tradition or routine. They have many hobbies and they do extroverted activities, whether that's axe throwing, going to concerts, uh, skylining, <laughs> ski-doing. Just, just be very creative about this. I don't know. Uh, often they're from New York City, California, and often touring around the country and the world for business opportunities. You only will catch a right kind of white person in Knoxville, Tennessee, if they're there to see a concert or something. But they worship individualism above all else. And this is what I would call Platonism, that yes, Platonism is, individualism is that manifestation of Platonism, but Platonism also worships the individual as a loving, beautiful object, that there is an intimate romance going on, that there's higher values among human people than animal behavior. It's very Eurocentric. And the most important part about the right kind of white people is that they have a naive, positive love for Euro culture and a silent avocation of it. But of course, we all know that whiteness is prob problematic. I'll get into that in a bit. There's a difference between this positive love for Euro culture and the avocation of whiteness. Whiteness would mean deracination, while the love for Euro culture would mean stuff white people like. And this is often under the, dis the disguise of hipsterism or some swepleness. For great examples of the right kind of white people, I list these three artists, Mike Perry, Jim Hauser, and Carson Ellis. Yes, they are likely admixture European people in America, and they would be white people, quote unquote, but often they have the same values as all the right kind of white people. Here they are, 
going back and forth from New York City to San Francisco to Philadelphia, all having their interesting, cartoony kind of art of free will, affluent, not even upward mobility. You're past upward mobility. You are that kind of good life. There's nothing, there's no scary hordes of non whites attacking you and such like that. And so these are kind of the emulation models of the right kind of white people. And often, this is what upward mobile middle class coming from the wrong type of white people would like to be. But it's interesting about Mike Perry, Jim Hauser, and Carson Ellis is that they are positive about being white. They're positive. They're embracing the hipsterdom. They're embracing the swepleness, which can be solidified into a racial category, the American white, the American race. But often they will deny this and say they are individuals or artistic interest, even though they have went to University of Montana or some middle of nowhere place where wrong white people are, but they actually enjoyed it, only then to go work in New York City or California. Now let me get into the wrong type of white people. If you know that there's rights, there must be wrongs, and wrongs are dumb, they're simple and suburban, middle class. They're actually selfish and race realist. They're race realist on the fact that they know blacks and Asians are different, but often they still believe in this kind of liberalism where, well, if we're all different, we can all still get along. In other words, they do race play. I should say that. Often they're arrogant and they have an obsession with masculinity. See, the wrongs are more in tune with animalistic behavior. That's why so often they'll have blue-collar jobs. They have these blue-collar jobs because they've just been told by their family, what do people do? Well, they go to work. They work at a 7-Eleven six days a week, collect their money, buy a house, have kids, do nothing. There's no higher aim for them. It's just existing, that God gave you existence, and that's a good thing. And so often their hobbies include sports, gossiping about other people in the neighborhood, TV to make uh, an imagined community, and beer, because I guess that's what you do when you're hard and it, it's, it's fun after hard work, right? So wrong people live and fly over country, Kansas, Illinois, Indiana, Oklahoma, Texas, New Mexico, all the fun place. And they never leave the town they grow up in. The only future is living this middle-class lifestyle. Not poor, not upper, just ultimately in anxiety and fear for quote-unquote survival, right? Survival on paycheck. It isn't so much going out in a forest and fending for yourself and hunting animals and eating them and, the, and walk it, looking out for the blizzard. No, it's getting a paycheck. Otherwise, you are locked out of the system if you don't have a paycheck, and so there's this ultimately a love for suburban nationalism, for their ultimate goal in life is to buy a house, and the creation of an ethnoburbs, where Deer Park, New York is now just all white, except that there's a Chinese cult that live, lives over there or something. And there's a loud interest for boomer, bear, capitalism, and liberalism, which was kind of inseminated and planted them through CIA, FBI propaganda in the 50s and 60s. And now there's this post-history effect where the erasure is happening and they don't even know what the hell they're doing. So the wrongs embody the deracinated ideology of whiteness. And this is bad because no one can be authentic anymore. They're not French people, they're not German people, they're not Irish people. So what happens? The right kind of white people pin down the wrongs as you know, being their dads, their brothers, their sisters. And so that's almost like this hideous somebody in the family line is dysgenic, mentally retarded, and that makes the right person mentally retarded. And so you have to weed out the wrongs from any conversation of future interest of white Americanism. And great examples of the, the wrongs or the wrong type of white people, I would say, would be Eminem, Guy Fieri, and Donald Trump. It seems obnoxious that these entertainers or powerful leaders, yes, Guy Fieri being a powerful leader, has something to do with the wrong type of white people, but it's also stuff white people don't like. 
you know, st- stuff white people don't like, it's because Eminem is culturally appropriating non-white culture because, you know, white people enjoy black music that black people don't like anymore. And when whites appropriate, then there's something problematic about it. And Guy Fieri is ironically liked. Because if you sincerely like Guy Fieri, there's something wrong with you. So you can only like Guy Fieri at a distance. And that's who would ever enjoy the crass fast food than the non, you know, than the organic and gluten-free food served at Trader Joe's, right? Something crazy there. And Donald Trump, well, he's the embodiment of stuff white people don't like because he gives power to the wrong type of white people. And so when the rights and the wrongs clash, something bad happens. Because white is not a race and is an ambiguous category of admixture European people, confusion happens, where no one believes in race anymore or as a solid identity. An all-out war happens where ethnomasochism is frequent among white people. The right kind of white people promote white guilt, which is a half-truth meaning that you feel guilty because you don't have an identity and your identity is based around certain values. Where you verse the civic nationalism advocated by the wrongs, where the wrongs are advocating a solid American race, that is a group of admixture European people and some Mexican and some mulattoes, whatever, but it's still an American race. And that's still problematic because then that's further deracination and Whites want to, the right kind of white people want to advocate their own admixture European people around this kind of Eurocentric individualism. So between the rights and the wrongs, no one can agree on a single race united. Again, both parties are deracinated and still hang on tight to this concept of Eurocentric individualism. And I'll also like to further elaborate that Advocating the wrongs, the wrong type of white people, isn't the right answer. Uh, there's been a book in the past called The Right Neck Manifesto by Jim Goad, which, which reads more like a, a punk zine pulp more than anything and meant for avant-garde haters. And you can watch my uh, video on avant-garde hate to know more about that. And then you have kind of these newer patches like the liberal redneck manifesto, Dragon Dixie Out of the Dark, where... You can celebrate the subculture and interest of the wrong type of white people, as Christian Lander would call Trailer Park Night, but, you know, still have the swepel policies of worshipping the neoliberal capitalist state and all the ethics that collide together. So what I'm saying is a celebration of the wrongs over the rights is not the answer. Both the rights and the wrongs are separated because there seems to be this Eurocentric blindness and white at white being white as or deracinated ideology. So what's left is subculture, and choosing a subculture is not the answer. It's more a part of the problem. I'll get into that further. So Eurocentric blindness is a common trait among white people, uh, Eurocentric, you know, uh, admixture European people. So perhaps the rights are motivated by Eurocentric blindness that everyone is white like me. So that must mean blacks, Indians, Mexicans, Asians, everyone also wants this individualism, universalism, egalitarianism, and democracy, which Mike Perry, Jim Hauser all want, correct? So if given enough time, like Plato to his students, the ignorant will see the errors of their ways and want to do everything stuff white people like. Stand in line for expensive gluten-free bread, right? Eurocentric blindness is caused by ignorance with regards to race, our own sexuality, work and what it is, and human violence. These are the four aspects that are a human reality and which individualism as an ideology denies. They completely contrast the values of the right kind of white people and the wrong type of white people. Because if whiteness is deracination, so does the ideology of individualism follows it. It must mean that Christianity, nice guy religion, the liberalism, as I just said, and feel-good capitalism is often a cause for this Eurocentric blindness among the right kind and wrong kind of white people. 
So what you have left is middle class nihilism. Maybe it's true that both the right and the wrongs know that race, sexuality, work, and violence are real animal traits of the human world. Often they will ask, you know, the individual under this middle class nihilism, how can I save the world? Why should I be the teacher? You know, what can I even do to change people's minds? And they'll rebuttal back, I just want to consume and live my quiet life. And so, liberal nihilism is still relevant to this day. Whites are hopelessly lost in a postmodern condition that has sedated them to surf their smartphone and consume until the very day they die. Life becomes an anime nobody is watching, and this Socratic concept of the good life is trying to emulate such behavior of Instagram modeling and of MTV subculture. Again, I, I strongly recommend that you watch my lecture on liberal nihilism versus ordinary nihilism to get further across what is this nihilism that's eating up white people. Now, so, if race, race realism, sexuality, how men and women are different and our sexual urge to reproduce, work or owning the means of production, and like human violence of getting angry, of wanting to hurt somebody, are all real concepts, then why should someone care? And couldn't they just drop out and be hedonistic? And this in itself is the middle class nihilism. That's both in the right and wrong type of white people. When addressed with these big issues, they just ignore it because I can be like Mike Perry and just be an artist and enjoy my swappleness because I have a positive interest in that. You know, why would I ever say white pride, save the white race? Those are racist concepts. Only people without identity say those things. And again, what I have to say to both the right kind of white people and the wrong type of white people is that identity is the answer. And that's is what you've been fighting for all this entire time. And the problem is we don't fully understand identity. But it is identity that makes us a part of family, that makes us a part of traditions, that makes us a full human being living out of Eric Erickson's psychosocial, you know, historical development, right? That white people will denounce this identity until they get a real authentic racial identity. This is why you have white girls that'll say, oh, I have an Italian family. I should embrace my Sopranos Italian New York City thing. This is because they want to denounce whiteness and be Italian, but they don't have it. They have this like deracinated subculture of sorts. But again, subculture is not a real identity. It's rather a byproduct of capitalism. And this is where goth, Chad, and Stacy often gets confused in white people's minds or hipster or something like that. White people will naturally make the same red pill conclusions I'm saying here and assimilate to a larger identity group, destroying the fake white one. This is why people like Pilly or advocate for Eurasian futurism is that race mixing seems tantalizing to whites who are from Kentucky and don't have a future, that they become this lower class being and assimilate into a high IQ state of mind, and that they too can now claim identity politics. They can say they're Eurasian. So there is a current clash between liberalism as a racial identity versus the American race. They're both admixture European people, but one is about ideology, that there is no race, that Joe Biden says America is an idea, right? So boomers still hold on to this belief, people born in the 50s and whatnot. They still believe that they're, the country's 95% white and everyone's an individual and you should treat them that way. And that this is like the end game here, that it wasn't just this plan made out by admixture European people with a, uh, a history of Eurocentric interest throughout European society, nothing to do with that. But again, this is further deracination because we're not holding on to solid identities like French, German, Irish, Catholic. No, finally, capitalism must be abolished in order to create a healthy organic society. This is why there was the Cold War, that ultimately communism was that healthy way of retaining racial identity. That even National Socialism, as controversial as that sound, was that third positionist party as well. And capitalism, whatever face it may takes, 
is kind of in this end period where everyone knows it's about to end. And then once capitalism is out of the way, it'll stop subjecticating and deracinating people, and people will find their own identity politic through all this going around. So it's really hard what's happening right now. And those who are in under-middle-class nihilism can't see the way. But I believe we'll make those same red pill conclusions, to use you know funny terminology, and assimilate to cohesive identity. And we'll understand the basis that race, sexuality, violence, and work are real human concepts, and we must own up to them. So often you'll see this sign everywhere that'll say, it's okay to be white. And liberals get upset about it because it doesn't mean it's okay to be an admixture European person. It's more like it's saying it's okay to be the wrong type of white person, to be a middle-class slump whiteness deracination. It reminds them that they don't have identity. But again, this is logic that preassumes um, liberalism and liberal semantics and a will to power that you're only playing by their lingo in order to proselytize them into white nationalism or into the concept that white nationalism and white nationalism assumes that liberalism is real and you can only practice liberalism under white nationalism that everybody must be the same admixture European person and thus anti-cosmopolitan and into middle class values well I, I'll present a new sign that's very radical and avant-garde and it's okay to hate quote-unquote, white people. It's okay to hate white people. Now, this isn't a sign so much that uh, you hate, you know, white people and you want to commit race war and that there's some, you know, non-white army going to kill European, admixture European people by the masses. No, you hate middle-class values. You hate these lower-class boomers still into the belief that liberalism is a part of our people. And no, it's not. It's a part of this deracinated project that further divides right kind of white people and wrong kind of paid people. And we're not united. So it's okay to hate white people should be this new sign. Because we're, again, we're not hating French, German, Irish people. We're hating deracination. And once we understand that, we'll get back to a unified intellectual, affluent, cosmopolitan, good artistic life that can talk about talk about race, sexuality, work, and violence. So, class dismiss, and thanks for listening.